you posted this other adorable picture of your daughter and I love it. And oh uh, yeah. So here's my thing. I can kind of see a little girl that's maybe dressed with ballet shoes. Is your daughter at ballet practice right now? Yes. Is she so she's <laughs> from this wallpaper. She's at our dance. Look at this wallpaper, by the way. Oh, I didn't even see the wallpaper. So well, she's at this dance school yeah. in LA. I mean, she's three, so you know, it's not like very rigorous or anything. But it's a time when like I love girly stuff. I love you know, dressing her up in girly stuff, and yeah. she hates it. But I thought, okay, she's going to ballet. She's pretty physical. Yeah. I got her the, the tutu, the little leotard, like everything. Never wears that. Will only wear this yellow Kobe Bryant <laughs> shorts and I jersey set. I love it. I love it's that like, she's so confident. Like, none of the other kids are wearing that. She's no. just like, this is what I'm wearing, and you're jealous. I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> she only, in her mind, the you can only... It's only appropriate to be doing ballet to like win her favorite. But you know what? Kobe Bryant was a great Laker and a you know great. Yeah. I love him in Los Angeles. So I'm happy. But it I do, I do wish she would wear some of the more girly stuff. I gotta say. I have to have this argument. I have this argument with my nanny, and I'm like, just let her wear what she wants because I. My mom just let me wear whatever I want. And I think it's kind of a form of creativity as well. Yeah, that's and so point. I'm just like, all right, just be you, do you, you'll figure it out. And my nanny is so funny. She's like embarrassed. Because <laughs> some of the stuff she puts on, I definitely had Punky Brewster. Well, like, it's I, like, whoa. Don't you feel like you say that? Because I'm also like, let the child live their own expressive life. And then yeah. they put something and you're like, that's heinous, you're not wearing that. I've <laughs> actually never, never have, said that. You're such a good mom. No, here's it. It's not like I'm such a good mom. It's like, I think... It was, it's, I think it was a really important thing for me to like, that was a, yeah, my way of like yourself. expressing myself. And I wasn't a writer yet and I wasn't mm -hmm. a singer yet so much when I was younger. Yeah. So I think it was like a way of like, I loved it. And I, I looked like a hot mess and sometimes we're too, but it's awesome. You know, I love it. my daughter's gonna watch this and be like, see, Kelly Clarkson <laughs> says that I should wear whatever yeah. I want. And I'm no, like, you will wear I'm abnormal a dress. though. Cause like <laughs> even even my ex-husband was like, are they gonna, they're not matching. Like their socks aren't matching, their shoes. Like I'm like, they're fine. Yeah. Oh, like, that's that's better. I you I know, know I should do that. That's probably I don't know. I don't know if it's the best thing, but I do it. I should probably read a parenting <laughs> book. It's probably a no no. Um, so you started writing at six. That's amazing. So what's one favorite thing you wrote as a kid? Okay. Well, when I say like writing, I don't mean like it was like so. No, I know, but you you when loved I was 60, it. I loved writing since I was like very little, and I was my mom was a doctor, yeah. and after school I was like the typical latchkey kid where. Yeah. Instead of going home, I just go to her office and she'd just put me in one of her little rooms. She was an OBGYN. So yeah. I was in the room where they like took blood. That can blood. be frightening for a girl. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, so we were in the room where they would like draw blood. So like patients yeah. would come in and draw blood. And my mom was like, just don't like look at anyone and be weird. So she gave me a little typewriter and in, um, I would sit in the corner and she's like, you can either read or you can write. There was like, I wasn't allowed to watch TV. I didn't have comic books or anything. And so I was like. What a great investment she gave me. <laughs> like, wow, you're like a phenomenal writer now. <laughs> yeah, although at that time I was like, I wish it could just have like a, you know, like a Nintendo, like yeah. a kid. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I would just write these little plays and then in between my mom's patients, I'd like run out and, you know, a pregnant woman would leave and she'd be like, okay, I have five minutes. And I would show her a little page of a play that I wrote. And so I wrote this one play about the haunt, a haunted house where like a werewolf and a witch and a, and a vampire lived in. I love and that. I would write all these things and and I'd be like, oh, what do you think? Are they funny? And she was such a tough critic. She would be like, no. So is my mother. Such a tough critic. Yes, and I think it yes. helped me. And, and me then, too. And then this one, she was like, I love it. And I remember at that moment being like, oh, this pride I feel. Yeah. Like I just wanted to chase that feeling. Yeah. And so I just went back to that weird little room in her office and I just kept like writing stuff. I love that though. Speaking of parents though, I'm, my mom my mom could be tough on me too and say yeah. like a lot of people have a dream to do what you want to do. Like it's hard work. She was very realistic. Yeah. But I think a lot of parents should be more realistic with kids. Like obviously support them in their dreams, but like, yeah. I, I don't know, you see those people that you're like, oh, everyone told you that your poo smells like roses your entire life. Like everything <laughs> yeah. you did is magical and they're so entitled. Yeah. And and I think it's good that we have parents like that, but you should did deserve but it. It's, not, it's interesting about it though. <laughs> it's like not modern, right? Like, cause now I'm sure your kids, like when they go to school, exactly. It's like, you get a trophy for participation. And like, yeah, yeah. if I got one of those, my mom would like throw it away. Oh my <laughs> God, I'm a Texan. We don't believe in that. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yes. We're and like, so cause you have to teach your kids how to lose. Yes. Yeah, that's it. I am not like being offensive to kids or parents that think otherwise. But I just mean, that is an important lesson for my kid to learn how to lose. Like when we're mm -hmm. playing a game, I don't let her win all the time. Like you gotta learn how to lose because you gotta yeah. learn how that feels and work through that emotional like state that sucks, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, which, well, this is a great conversation. Um, so you, you started out as the only female writer for The Office. Was that like horrifying or hard? 
It seems awkward if you're walking in there being like, yeah, my jokes are awesome. Yeah, so this was back in 2004. I was 24. That's and a long time. Long time ago. And um, I think there's like there's been so many changes now. But the thing is, most of the people who are on the office and the writers room are still my friend now. I was really lucky. Um, but yeah, I was like the only woman, only person of color on the writing staff. But I think it was really useful to me yeah. because what I learned was like, okay, I just have to impress these guys. I know I don't necessarily look like them, but I would like, you know, show up an hour early. I'd leave an hour after everyone else did, even if I didn't have any work to do, just because I wanted to give the appearance of like, I am the hardest working person here. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I didn't have any experience writing in TV. And you feel like and, you have to work harder. And I felt like I had yeah. to work harder. And I have to say, like, it was a great lesson to learn because I did work harder, but then it's like, I wrote the most episodes in the office of any writer there. It's amazing. Hours. Thank you. And God, what a funny show. I think it's like, it's a double-edged sword. It's like, I feel like what I tell my daughter and <laughs> you know, a lot of my, my friends who are women and women of color is like, if we think of it as like, oh great, I have to work so much harder to prove myself, but it's like, oh great, I have the opportunity to work harder mm. and learn more and prove myself. And so I think putting in all that extra time back in the day really prepared me for like, having my own show when I had my own show, yeah. which I'm sure, you know, yeah. you felt like, whoa, I'm so happy I worked oh, so hard Oh, I had now. to be a hard worker my whole life, yeah. but I think that panned out well. And I also, so. if I say this too, like, I was never like this like traditionally like beautiful on camera person. Yeah. And I felt like I was like, it doesn't matter. Like I have something else, which is that I can write, I can do this other thing. And it made me special. And so beauty fades, you know, yeah. and I'll still be able to like be writing in the corner at home. So. But here's what's funny, cause you walked out and I was like, good gosh, you're beautiful. So like, that's so funny. <laughs> I'll how take we, it. No, it's how we see ourselves. Cause yeah. I don't see myself as that either. And I always have to make jokes and people make, I feel like I'm funny girl, like Fanny Bryson, like funny, funny girl. Like yeah. when they ask her to sing a beautiful song, she's like, mm, not without humor. Yeah, and yeah, I'm like, yeah, 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 can't do it. And yeah, I yeah. think that's me too. But I think, I think all of that like is character building. And I do think that it makes you focus on when you aren't, that's not your focus. You focus on your actual gifts and your talents and what yeah. you really want to accomplish. So I think that's yeah. good.